Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for Aspen Tech CRM's presentation of Zoho CRM and Zoho Finance Integration. Um, for anyone who's not familiar with us, let me do a brief introduction. Uh, I'm Marshall Knapp, your host today. I'm the president here at Aspen Tech CRM. I've personally been working in the CRM field since 1999, and I've been a Zoho certified consultant since 2014. Uh, our company has been in the CRM and related fields since 1994. Uh, we've got clients throughout North America, even a few global clients, and they're virtually in all imaginable industries. Uh, we're based in Novi, Michigan, which for any of you who aren't familiar with the area, uh, we're in Southeast Michigan and we're about halfway between Detroit and Ann Arbor. Uh, we've got a team here of seven full-time US-based consultants, trainers, developers, and support staff, all geared towards helping you get the most out of Zoho. So our agenda today, uh, we've got an hour scheduled. Uh, I'm not sure we'll need all that time. Uh, it might depend on how many questions we have at the end and how quickly we go through some of this content here. Um, but I think we'll come in a little bit short of that. Um, you know, we're gonna go through a presentation here. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about what is the Zoho Finance Suite. Um, we're gonna talk about Zoho Books versus QuickBooks. Uh, I'm well aware there's many other uh, accounting solutions out there, but QuickBooks for a long time has been uh, one of the standard solutions for a lot of our clients. And I uh, just wanted to show how Zoho Books uh, stacks up in that world, um, show you that they're a, a legitimate player these days. Um, let me give you an overview um, of Zoho CRM and the Zoho Finance integration. Uh, then we'll jump into a live demo, uh, actually take a look at how that works. Uh, and then we'll have some time at the end for a QA. and a uh, This session is also being recorded. Uh, you'll get a recording of this after the fact. Uh, I'll also share the presentation here with you as well. And of course, if you have any questions, um, feel free to post those into the Q&A as we go along. Um, you'll see a little question mark icon down at the bottom of your screen. If you click on that, you'll be able to post questions and uh, we'll be able to respond to those either during the presentation or at the end when we have some time reserved there. So let's go ahead and dive in. So what is the Zoho Finance Suite? Uh, the Zoho Finance Suite is really a combination of six different applications um, that all combine to give you what you need to handle not only the customer facing side of financing, you know, invoicing, um, payments, uh, estimates, sales orders, you know, things of that nature, um, but also the vendor side of things uh, with dealing with bills and, and purchase orders, things like that. Uh, also, the internal side of things, dealing with your team members and teammates uh, with expenses and expense reports, um, but also books is really an over, uh, a comprehensive accounting solution uh, that gives you not only those front end capabilities, um, but also uh, all the back end capabilities that you need to for financial reporting, uh, your taxes, your, for your account needs, um, things like that. Um, there are a couple of weak spots in, in the books uh, or finance suite uh, at this point. I would say if you need to do like inventory assemblies, if you're an ER, if you're in an ERP system today, you know, taking you know multiple um, parts or products uh, and combining those together and then creating something new that you sell, um, that's not something that Zoho uh, Finance Suite is strong in today. Um, and uh, you know, outside of a couple of other limitations along those lines, um, really Zoho Books and the Finance Suite works quite well for a lot of a lot of businesses out there. We have a lot of clients starting to use this now. Um, one important note I did want to make as well is that you'll see uh, Zoho Billing on here. Um, that's actually the new name for Zoho Subscriptions. Um, that's a recent change that Zoho made. Um, you'll see it's still referred to as Zoho Subscriptions in some places, but that will be Zoho Billing uh, moving forward. So let's talk about Zoho Books, which is kind of the, at the heart of the finance suite and, and comparing that to QuickBooks. You know, like I mentioned earlier, I know there's other uh, accounting solutions out there, um, but for a long time, QuickBooks has been the standard for, for most small businesses, uh, some medium businesses as well. Um, according to softwareadvice.com, um, Zoho Books narrowly edges out QuickBooks Online, both really good ratings. Uh, a lot of very similar ratings when you look at the individual breakdowns. Um, but uh, when it all comes down to it in the end, um, Zoho Books has a slightly higher rating um, than QuickBooks Online. 
Another comparison here from Forbes Advisor, um, giving Zoho Books an even a little bit more of an edge uh, over QuickBooks. Um, both, again, great products, but um, Zoho Books um, edging out uh, QuickBooks here. Um, and then one more comparison here, one more um, sort of ranking, I guess. Uh, PC Magazine, that's long been a very reputable source out there as well uh, for these types of things. Um, Zoho Books is an editor's choice. It's got a 4.5 rating, which is outstanding. I think you'll find that that stacks up with any of the other accounting solutions that they've reviewed. And um, it's also noted as the best for mobile access. So if you're on the go, you need to pull up uh, an invoice, create an invoice, uh, check some reports, dashboards, things like that. Um, Books is a, is a fantastic app for that sort of thing. Uh, if you compare Zoho Books to other accounting solutions out there, whether that's, you know, Xero or Sage or some of those, I think you're going to find similar results. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, that might not have been the case, um, but Zoho Books has really done a lot and is, is making quite a name for themselves now. And obviously, one of the great things about uh, a tool like Zoho Books and the finance suite from Zoho is that it all integrates uh, with the other Zoho tools that you have. So in, in particular, this webinar is about the CRM integration. We're going to get a lot deeper into that here in just a moment. So let's go through an overview of what that CRM and Zoho Finance integration looks like. Uh, there's a number of different modules that would be integrated uh, when you set this up. Uh, so you have from Zoho Books, things like invoices, estimates, sales orders, and purchase orders. Um, you have expenses and expense reports coming from Zoho Expense. Um, you have Zoho subscriptions or Zoho billing, uh, bringing in any subscriptions that they have, any recurring billing, payment methods, things like that. Um, and then with Zoho Inventory, you have many other options there, or many other items that are syncing with products and stock, uh, sales orders, packages, shipments, and, and all sorts of things there. Um, so all these various uh, Zoho Finance apps will tie into the CRM uh, sort of in their own way. Uh, but one thing that's common amongst all of them is the synchronization of a few key items. Um, those are the accounts and contacts from the CRM. Those will sync over to customers and contact people uh, over in books or the finance suite. Uh, vendors, as well as the products or the items uh, that you have on the finance side. Uh, that is sort of a shared database uh, for the entire finance suite. So that sync that's taking place between books or finance and CRM does it not only for books, but it's also doing it for uh, other applications like expense, subscriptions, inventory, uh, making sure you have all of that set up kind of in one place. When you configure the synchronization, uh, there's a number of different options that you have available to you. Uh, you can choose to only sync the accounts. Um, you can synchronize the accounts and their contacts from the CRM. Um, you can also sync contacts that don't have accounts. So if you're in a um, B2C model, business to consumer model, and you don't have an account like a household maybe to associate somebody with or anything like that, and you just have standalone contacts, you can certainly bring them in as well. Uh, when it comes to deciding which records need to be synchronized, uh, you can choose to synchronize all accounts and, and all contacts, um, or you can choose to synchronize only a view of accounts, and then it would bring in only then the contacts uh, associated with those accounts within the view. Uh, there's also some options uh, as far as uh, what you want to have happen in case there's a conflict between uh, the Zoho Finance Suite and, and what you've done on the CRM side of things. Um, there's really three different options. You can you can clone, which would actually create a duplicate record, and we don't recommend doing that. Uh, you can overwrite, which means that the CRM change would take precedence over the uh, Zoho Finance change. Um, or you could skip, which means that the change from CRM would be ignored and, and not 
written to the finance suite. Now, we're not talking about changes to um, financial information, things like that. You're not changing that type of stuff in CRM and, and trying to sync that over. We're talking about changes to contact information here, like a phone number or an address or things like that. So um, what we typically recommend here is, is ensuring that the CRM is sort of your go-to source for making those types of updates and then set it as you see here to overwrite. So if there ever is a conflict, um, CRM would take precedence there. Um, that's kind of our standard setup, what we would advise, um, but certainly you could probably come up with some use cases for, for doing it differently. Um, in addition, you can map fields. Um, these include custom fields as well. So you know, there's a lot of standard fields, of course, that will map automatically, um, but you can also map uh, ad some additional standard fields as well as custom fields between the, the records in your CRM and the records in your uh, Zoho Finance Suite. These syncs take place every two hours, um, but there is an instant sync option. So you can go into books, and I can show you that a little bit later on here, uh, and force it to sync instantaneously. And that usually only takes a, a couple of minutes. It really depends on how much data has changed since the last sync. So if you're pushing closer to that two hour window, and it's in, you know, right during the middle of the business day, it might take a little bit longer. Uh, if you just synced five minutes ago and if this is after hours, it might only take a few seconds to finish that synchronization. Um, so uh, but the, either way, it's going to run through pretty quickly and, and you'll have that data there um, pretty shortly after you initiate that. Uh, one thing I did want to note here, I don't necessarily have it on the slide, but uh, when you're setting this up, you do want to make sure that um, Zoho CRM and the Zoho Finance Suite and any of the applications over there, that you're using the same base currency. Um, if you don't have the same base currency, um, that will cause some problems. You won't be able to integrate it, so you'll have to change that in order to do so. Um, you can certainly have multiple currencies going forward. You just have to make sure that they're both operating on the same base currency. One of the interesting things that you can also configure in the uh, CRM and finance integration are called CRM trigger points. Uh, so when you are going through and working a deal um, inside of CRM or an opportunity, um, you can actually have that trigger certain things within the Zoho Finance Suite. Like you can see here, when you get to the stage of proposal and price quote, you can actually have it generate an estimate. Um, or when the stage is closed one, have that mark that estimate as accepted by the customer. Or with the stage is closed lost or closed lost to competition, we can void that estimate. And as you can see from the screen there, there's also similar options that we might be able to configure under the invoice area. So get to a certain stage within the deal, now you want to invoice the customer. Um, you can have it do things like that as well. There's also customizable security based on the CRM roles that you have configured. So if you go into a security role inside of CRM after you've integrated the finance suite and you go to edit one of those roles, uh, I'm sorry, security profile, uh, not a role, security profile. You go in there to edit a security profile and within there, you're gonna see a Zoho finance area. You can turn off that integration altogether um, by disabling the, the Zoho Finance um, entirely from that user. Um, you can also, though, be more selective. Um, you know, there's options to, to disable their ability to view altogether a particular module, like say invoices, if you didn't want them to see that, or you can limit their ability to create and edit. You can limit their ability to send those things to the customers. Uh, and you can do that at a fairly granular level here across invoices, purchase orders, sales orders, and, and so on. I'll correct that. That's actually uh, the CRM profile there, just to be clear. Uh, there's also contextual integrations that you get uh, once you set up the finance integration. So this is uh, from books. This is an account or a customer record inside of books. Um, you can actually go in and see the CRM record um, from the, the books record. Um, so that may be helpful. There might be some things that you didn't map over um, that you still want to see. 
uh, and this would give you the ability to do so. We're on different transactions in books. You can click on a CRM icon to see which records from CRM are associated with that and then click through uh, to get to those records as well. Uh, within various CRM modules, you're also going to find data from the finance suite. So under a product, as an example, you're going to see quantity in stock, um, quantity on order, quantity in demand, things like that drawing directly from the accounting data. So if you've got SOFO inventory configured, you know, you're getting stock and order quantities there. Quantity and demand is coming from, you know, estimates and sales orders, those types of things. Um, but in addition to that, you're also going to see data in a variety of other places, like accounts, as an example, being able to see you know, on a particular account, what are their total sales? What are their outstanding receivables? Um, those types of things are going to then be visible to you from within the CRM. In addition, you're going to get more detail than that. There's related lists that are going to be created for Zoho Finance within CRM. So you can see here a couple of examples from both Zoho Inventory and Zoho Subscriptions. With Inventory, you can see various packages there. You can filter those by status. With something like Zoho Subscriptions, you can even create a new subscription directly from the CRM. So imagine the power of that, not having to do as a sales rep or somebody else that would be responsible for generating a new subscription, not even having to go into Zoho subscriptions. Just do that right from the account or the contact in CRM. You also get reports and analytics. Um, so the data here doesn't exactly reside in CRM. Um, but you're going to get reports based on Zoho Books data, Zoho Finance data. Um, Zoho Expense is another one where you get reports based on that. And then not only do you get the reports, you can also turn those things into dashboards. Uh, so this can be part of your uh, analytics views, but they can also be part of, say, your home screen uh, within CRM. So you're using CRM every day, but you can actually add um, dashboards and analytics, KPIs, things like that from the Zoho Finance Suite directly in there once you have these integrated. Uh, so as you can see there, there's a lot of uh, power in what you can do here uh, with Zoho Finance and Zoho CRM. Um, let's actually take a firsthand look at some of the functionality here. All right, so here I am inside Zoho CRM. Um, I want to go into books for just a moment here. And whether I do this from books or whether I do this from inventory or I do this from subscriptions, doesn't really matter because they all they all share the same sync setup. Um, if I go into integrations under the setup here, you can see that I got Zoho CRM right here. Uh, if I go into the details of this, you can see here how we've got things set up with the accounts and contacts from CRM uh, going into books, the vendors from CRM going into books, and the products from CRM syncing up with books. Uh, now you can go in and you can edit any of these, and there's a variety of in the settings that I was talking to you about earlier, um, You know, deciding what type of records from CRM are going to sync. Um, you can also choose which direction these things sync. If you do want to do the full integration, everything I've kind of outlined for you so far, you do need to have a bi-directional sync going on in this case, choose the option that says sync both ways. Um, if you choose fetch only from CRM, you won't get all the functionality back in CRM uh, from the finance suite. Um, you're only going to be pushing data over to finance, which for some people might be the right thing to do. Maybe you only have an accountant using Zoho Finance and they don't need access to the CRM or they're not going to use this type of data over in the CRM. So something like fetch from CRM might be okay there. Uh, but for most people who want that full functionality, and certainly most of what I've showed you so far today, uh, you're going to want to set this to sync both ways. Um, when we talk about how to handle duplicate records, again, the best practice here is to overwrite. Um, go ahead and make CRM your sort of best practice for where you make these types of updates. And we're not talking about financial data and things like that. We're talking about phone numbers, uh, mailing addresses, shipping addresses. Uh, uh, email addresses, information like that. 
contact people, you know, what is it, you know, William or Bill, you know, that type of stuff. Make those changes over in the CRM and then let that push over into Zoho Books. You can choose what view you want to have synchronized. Um, so right now I don't have any views in this demo account other than the basic views, um, but you might create a custom view like sync to books, um, something along those lines. So, um, you know, you might go in and say, you know, I don't really need all of these accounts that I have in here and all of their contacts um, synchronizing over to Zoho Books. Maybe I only want my customers or if I'm going to be doing things like estimates too, maybe I need prospects as well, but maybe I don't need, um, you know, other business contacts, you know, centers of influence, referral sources, folks like that um, being sent over. Um, so you might create a custom view in that case. And you might call this something like sync to Zoho Finance. And then you can specify criteria like account type is uh, customer or um, prospect. That way you can obviously handle the customers and all their billing, but you can also do things like estimates uh, with the prospects. In the interest of time, I'm not going to really worry about my columns here. We're just going to save this. Um, and then you can use a, a view like that. Oh, I guess we don't have any, any, any accounts that meet that criteria. So let me just go back in here really quick. And then we would do something like they've got them as a vendor let's make them a customer and we'll do one more we'll make them a uh, prospect all okay, right so now we've got a couple of accounts that can be synced to zoho finance and then within each of these accounts we've got contacts those contacts will also come over if we set that up um, now I'd have to probably refresh this to see that. Um, let me go ahead and do that. All right. Yep. Sync to Zoho Finance. There it is. So now I'm only getting a subset of the accounts I have in CRM uh, moved over to Zoho Books. Now, if you wanted to do something similar with the contacts, you know, let's say you've got you know 10 or 15 contacts under each one of these accounts. Um, you can also choose to, to sync only a subset of the contacts, which would just require another view within there. Now, it's only going to sync contacts that are both in that view and associated with the contacts that are in, or accounts that are in this view, um, unless you choose to sync contacts that stand alone uh, separately up here. Here's the field mapping. So you can go through and map the different fields that you need. Um, again, any um, standard fields in here, you can also do custom fields as well. So uh, a lot of different options on how you bring that data over. Um, you don't necessarily need to bring that data over to see it because again, you can click to see a snapshot of the profile of the account from CRM. This would be more if you wanna actually use this information in you know, your invoice templates, your estimate templates, the mail merge emails that you send out to the customers. That's why you typically want to have this information over here. So don't feel like you need to, to map everything or to be exhaustive in what you do here. Just, just map the information that you're going to use in those types of templates. All right. And then we'll go ahead and save this and sync it. Okay. Just warning me there about the overwrite option that I could potentially lose data that I didn't put inside of uh, books because we're overwriting it from CRM. Now, each individual app, whether it's books or expense or subscriptions or inventory, they can all be configured a little bit differently beyond this. Recall that this is, con this is consistent for all of them, right? Um, if we go down here to additional steps within here, now I'm in books, um, I can choose to sync different transaction models, modules, sorry, um, from books with CRM. I don't have to sync all of them. Um, I can also create those uh, workflows that we were talking about earlier, those CRM triggers, right? And if I go in here, you'll see some of the settings that I showed you previously. Um, so when you could actually be working a deal inside the CRM, and when the stage gets to proposal slash price quote, that would actually create a new quote inside of Zoho Books. 
um, or when the stage gets to close to one, that would mark the uh, quote as approved. Um, or you could do similar things with invoices. Um, you can actually create an invoice as an example when the deal stage is one, or you could void an invoice if you mark it as lost at some point. So um, lots of interesting ways you can automate there, or if you decide you don't want to do that, you can turn that off as well. All right, let me actually jump over to uh, CRM for a moment here. I want to show you that security control that we have in this. So if I go under the profiles here, I go into say the standard profile. Uh, we're going to scroll down on this to Zoho Finance. So here's Zoho Finance. So right now, my standard user does not have access to the Zoho Finance suite. Uh, if I wanted them to have access to that, I can turn this on right here. And then once I do that, then I have some other options here as far as how much access do I want to provide to them. Um, similarly, you've got the Zoho expense integration there. So uh, various options here that you can control uh, within the security profiles for your users. Now, what does this integration look like? Um, if we go into a uh, customer record here, um, let's go into these guys right here. Um, I can click on this Zoho CRM right here, and I can actually see pretty much the full details of the, uh, the account record. Um, not all the related lists and things like that, um, but I can see all the, the main fields and, and data that's right there on the record. Um, so that can be handy here, even if I didn't synchronize that information over. Um, the contacts that came over into this account, uh, this contact here, any additional contacts that might be listed down here, those would have all come from the CRM. And you even have the ability to, to configure this so you can specify who goes in as the primary billing contact right here. And that can all be managed then from the CRM. Within individual transactions, uh, let me go ahead and, well, there's actually a transaction right here. Uh, within individual transactions, like if I go into this one here, um, you can click on this CRM icon too inside of books. And then you can see things like notes and projects and events or meetings, calls, potentials, things like that that could potentially also be associated with this item here. Um, similarly, when we do something like uh, an expense, let me go over to expense here. If I go into create an expense, uh, let's add an expense. I can actually link this then to the customers that are in CRM. Uh, so then these expenses not only are tied to the customers from an accounting standpoint, but also I then can see them in CRM from a visibility standpoint. And I can also add these expenses directly in CRM, and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. All right, so if we go over into CRM, let's take a look at a few of the things we've got going on over here. Uh, let's go into products. Oops, actually, it's over here already. There we are. So we go into products, and we take a look at these items here. Um, this is a non-inventory product, so I don't have Zoho Finance information on this one. Let me go back to another one here. Let me see if I've got another one on this. Also a non-inventory product. Okay, it doesn't look like our products are linked with inventory right now for some reason or another. Um, but if they were, that's where you would see like quantity in stock, quantity ordered, quantity in demand, things like that right here on the product record inside CRM. So imagine being like a salesperson talking to a prospect on, a phone, on the phone, being able to go in and actually see um, that information right there. Um, we do have those fields up here, but these are the base CRM fields. These are not actually populated from Zoho Finance. It would actually be right here if we had it linked up appropriately. And I'm not sure why that is or what happened to that linking, but um, this is where you would see that uh, if you had that linked up with Zoho Inventory. We can still take a look at some of the other uh, contextual integrations here, though. Let me go over to accounts. Um, let me go into somebody like this here. Here you can see the finance and details here, receivables and payables. 
it is linked with Zoho Finance. That's why you can see this stuff here. Uh, they don't happen to have anything right now under this particular account in, in books, which actually is accurate. Um, but if you did have anything, this is exactly where you would see that. So again, imagine being a CRM user, whether you're in sales or you're in customer service or support or something like that, not having to ask an accountant for these types of updates, not have to go to a separate accounting system, which your company may or may not want you to have access to anyways, uh, and being able to have all that information uh, right at your fingertips is very powerful. Let me go into one of these that did have an invoice. That was uh, these guys, I believe. And if I go down under their Zoho finance area here, um, you can see that invoice right here in this related list. Um, if we had expenses, you would see those under expenses here, things like that. But again, you can create a new expense right from here. Uh, so if I click on expense, this is almost exactly the same window that I would see from Zoho Expense. The only difference is it automatically uh, puts in that customer from the account that I, I initiated this from. Uh, so that can make it really easy to, well, you know, you're probably spending most of your time in CRM to quickly and easily upload expenses uh, and build your expense reports right from there. This expense tab uh, is actually available directly within CRM as well. So you can click on like Zoho expense right there and see expenses, unreported expenses, different things like that, uh, as well as a Zoho finance tab too, which will show you listings of invoices and estimates, that type of stuff um, directly from the CRM. Uh, you don't have to go to uh, Zoho books to see that type of stuff. Now let's go back into this particular customer here. Um, and I'm gonna go and create a new estimate. So if I create a new estimate uh, right from CRM, because so I'm a salesperson, I'm working in CRM, I can create a new estimate right here. Uh, if I have a deal that I wanna associate this with, I can. Uh, if I don't yet have a deal created, I can create one right on the fly. Um, so this helps keep all those moving parts sort of interconnected and gives you that complete picture of the, the sale and the, the deal that you're going after here. Uh, quote date, that's fine there. Expiration, let's give it through the end of the month. Uh, if you had projects linked up here, you could, you could put those in there too. Um, you can put in a description. So uh, this is for the new conference room. And then you can go in here and select your items. Now you're not selecting items here from CRM. You're doing this directly from the items that are in the accounting system. Uh, so I can put in like hardware A. We'll put in two of those. Add another line. We'll put in uh, subscription A. One of those. Um, even doing things like adding item headers and things like that to really format this however you like. Uh, you can put in shipping. Uh, you can adjust with discounts if you want to. Uh, of course, there's other notes, terms and conditions, things like that. And then who do you want to send this to? If you don't want to send it to the customer, that's fine. You don't have to. Uh, you can just save it. Uh, but if you do, you can hit save and send. And then you're actually delivering this estimate or this quote that you just created here um, in the CRM, uh, then directly to the customer without ever having to touch um, Zoho Books or the Zoho Finance Suite. So I can't send an email because our email hasn't been verified in this demo account, but that's how you would go about doing that. Uh, and then of course you can view these things directly here inside the CRM. Um, once you have it inside the CRM like this, you have the ability to convert this. So you can convert this then to an invoice so then that gets issued uh, to the customer. Um, these same types of features and functions that you have here from the accounts where I initiated this, uh, you can also do a lot of this from the deals module too. Uh, so if we go into that same deal uh, that we're dealing with there, um, come down here, uh, you can see that quote that I first created, uh, just created there a minute ago, that's in draft. Uh, if I need to create another quote or estimate to go along with this, I can certainly do that as well. And just do all that right from the deal. The advantage of doing it from the deal is not only does it link to the customer directly, uh, it links also with that deal uh, that you initiated it from. Outside of that, everything else that you see here is exactly the same. 
And then again, whether you're at the account level or you're at the deal level, uh, once you're ready to go ahead and build a customer for this, you can go right back in here, open that up. Uh, you don't have to go into the Zoho Finance Suite and then you can convert this to an invoice. If there's any adjustments to be made here, or maybe you've got a PO number you wanna put in, you can do that. And then you can go ahead and send that out to the customer. I won't be able to send this because my email is not verified, but you get the idea of what you can do here. And then anything I do from the deal level there is similarly linked to the account. So if I go back into the account there, you know, we'll see that same uh, invoice converted right here. Now, one of the other things that we have the ability to do, let me create a new deal here. Let's sample deal. We're going to start this at the um, qualification stage. But recall we have some automation set up that when we get to proposal price quote, it'll actually create that quote. Um, when we get to closed one, it'll actually approve that quote, things like that, right? So let's just take a quick look at how that works. All right, so let's go into the sample deal there. And then we're going to go to proposal price quote. So I've got a proposal price quote now, OK? And that should initiate a new estimate. Uh, for some reason, it's not going up there. Oh, there it is. Yep, there's a draft. Perfect. I just didn't see it in the uh, related list notifications for whatever reason. Um, so that actually created this automatically. Now, it doesn't know what we want to include in this because it's just not that advanced right now. But if that was something you wanted to do where you had details of you know, what you wanted to include as the line items on here within that deal, whether those are in fields in the deal or a sub form on the deal, things like that, uh, we do have the ability through custom automation uh, and some custom development work that we've done for other clients and ourselves uh, to generate uh, quotes or estimates, as well as invoices in, in a much more customized way than what this does on its own. And then the other thing, of course, that this does um, is when you uh, get to the closed one, then the automation would automatically uh, approve uh, that particular quote that we put out there. So we go back under here. Now it's not in draft status anymore. Now it's been accepted because the uh, deal is now closed one. One of the things that uh, we often get questions about is, you know, what to do with things like the, the products, the quotes, the uh, sales orders, purchase orders, invoices, those modules that already exist in the CRM, because CRM off the shelf has things like that. Um, products, I would say you definitely want to keep. Products are the items that actually sync with books and subscriptions and, and those other tools. So you want to keep products in place. Um, but those other ones, quotes, um, sales orders, purchase orders, invoices, any of those can probably be hidden. And if you're not aware how, how to do that, just go into the setup here. Uh, if you have permissions to do this, um, go into your modules and fields and go into organize modules here. And then you just need to uncheck the ones you don't want. Um, quotes, sales orders, things like that. Now, unfortunately, it's telling me here, uh, what do we have going on? Uh, we have a journey tied into this. So unfortunately, with this particular journey here tied into that, uh, we're not able to uh, hide that module yet. If I got rid of this journey, then I could hide the module. So easy enough, I would go in there and do that, but I'm just not going to do that in the interest of time for today's webinar. Plus, we might need that journey for something else, and I don't want to think about that right now. All right, what else do we do inside the CRM? Um, the last thing here I want to show you is the reports and the dashboards. So under reports, um, there's Zoho Finance reports as well as Zoho Expense reports. Um, like one of the reports you can run here is overdue invoices by customer. 
Uh, that might be handy for your CRM users to be able to run a report like that maybe once a week or so uh, and take a look at uh, what kind of overdue invoices they have out there. Or maybe you want to create a report that you know where you can filter this type of information by uh, sales rep as an example, um, and then you know distribute that out to the team. Uh, another thing you can do with this too is you can create charts. So you can create a chart, of course, right within here uh, inside the report, just like you can with other reports. Um, but like more powerful than that, even is the ability to go into something like analytics or the dashboards area here inside Zoho CRM and add that same type of report right here. Um, so if I'm going to add a chart, let's say I can do that from a report. Um, I can choose within here, like overdue invoices. There we go. We'll call this overdue invoices by customer. Not very unique, but that's OK. It is what it is. And um, do we want to do a record count of those invoices? No, I think some of the balance sounds better. Uh, grouping would be by account name. Okay. And then let's go ahead and save that. So now that adds to my dashboard here, um, that that report or that uh, analytics component now for overdue invoices by customer, which is great to have it here. But what I like to do with that then is take that and add it to the home screen. So then we're here inside CRM on our home screen, not only dealing with CRM data like we have right here, but we also have, if we scroll down, accounting data, like overdue invoices by customer. So as a business owner, as a manager, as a sales rep, as a customer service rep, I mean, lots of different roles can benefit by having this information here. It'd be very powerful once you get these things integrated. One of the other things I just want to mention, I don't have something to show you here, um, but through this integration, um, we can also do automation from books, um, pushing statuses and things like that in a custom way back into the CRM. So if you want to see on an account record, uh, maybe that uh, right up here at the top in you know big bold letters or something like that, that this account is overdue, uh, we can put that right here in CRM for you uh, through a little bit of custom automation. Uh, we can also send reminders to CRM users or notifications to CRM users. Like, let's say an invoice is uh, paid in books. Uh, we can send a notice to the sales rep letting them know that that invoice was paid, as an example. Um, or copy a sales rep on a reminder that goes out to a customer on an overdue invoice. You know, different things like that can be done. So uh, lots of flexibility with how we integrate these tools and the types of automation and, and workflow that we put in here as well. All right, let's jump back to here. Um, just want to talk a little bit briefly about how um, Aspen Tech might be able to assist uh, if you're looking at Zoho Finance Suite um, or if you already have it and, and you might need some assistance there. Um, if you're looking at it, you know, we can talk to you about whether or not it's the right solution for you. Uh, if you're on you know, QuickBooks or Sage or any of those other tools that are out there, um, let's have a conversation about how you're utilizing that and whether or not something like the Zoho Finance Suite might make sense for you. And I will say we are not accountants, um, but that being said, we do have in the Zoho world what are called Zoho Books Advisors, and we partner with a couple of them. So we've got people that are accountants that also know Zoho Books that can also come in and weigh in on some things or, or give us a helping hand if need be. Uh, we can help with the implementation and converting you from uh, some of those other tools. Again, here we have accountants that we bring in uh, where needed. So uh, these are not you know, CRM guys over here at Aspen Tech or CRM gals over here at Aspen Tech trying to do this sort of stuff. Uh, we can do a lot of it, but if we need uh, somebody to really handle uh, some of the financial or accounting side of things, we've got the people to do so. Um, configuration and customization of these tools, um, any kind of custom development or automation that you might be looking to do. Uh, integrations with other Zoho tools that maybe they don't integrate with off the shelf or maybe other tools that you have on your end, third-party applications that, that you need tied in. Uh, we can look at that and help you there. We can also provide online or in-person training on these applications. Um, that includes training for end users, uh, managers, as well as administrators. Uh, and then we can help you with ongoing technical support too. 
Uh, so if something's broken, it's not working right, um, you know, we can either help you fix it ourselves or let you know if it might be something that makes sense to go talk to Zoho directly about. Um, so we do have some time here for questions. Um, if there are any, um, you can uh, continue to post to the Q&A area uh, within Zoho Meeting or Zoho Webinar over there. Uh, if you're not familiar with where that is, um, just click on the question mark icon down at the bottom. Uh, that'll bring up the Q&A area, and then you can post a question there for us to answer. So one thing I did want to address here, um, all of these applications that we showed today are included in the Zoho One suite. Uh, if you're on Zoho One, you would have access to all of these. Um, CRM Plus does not include uh, anything from the finance suite, but you can subscribe to um, Finance Plus. That would include all of these applications as well. Or for many, many customers, um, simply implementing something like Zoho Books is all you need. Um, you know, we use Zoho Books internally ourselves. Um, we do use Zoho Expense a little bit as well, um, but we do not uh, necessarily, we, we, we have not needed to implement invoice or checkout or subscriptions or inventory or any of those applications in order to fulfill uh, our accounting needs. Uh, so while all of those options are out there and certainly at your disposal, um, you, you certainly don't need all of those uh, depending on your requirements. Again, one of the areas we've seen kind of Zoho books um, come a little bit short is in uh, like manufacturing and if you're trying to take uh, multiple uh, parts of things that you've already purchased and, and create something larger than that you can sell uh, books does not really have the accounting capacity for those types of things at this point um, but for just about any other business we have found that zoho books um, can fit really well uh, with with their needs so if you're using quickbooks um, sage accounting zero fresh books anything like that uh, and are looking for something that uh, better integrates into the Zoho ecosystem in your CRM, I would definitely recommend looking at uh, the Zoho Finance Suite and in particular Zoho Books. I don't see any other questions coming in right now, but certainly happy to hang around for a little while if uh, you guys do have some additional questions. Uh, if you need to run, I wanted to thank you for joining us today. Uh, if you do uh, need any assistance with the Zoho Finance Suite, um, integrating that with your CRM or just anything else is Zoho related, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, you can see my contact information here on screen. Uh, feel free to give me an email, give me a call. Um, be happy to discuss these things more with you in the future. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.